And the suffering continues as we move on to episode 5, aptly named A Lost Cause. I'm telling you, the writers knew exactly what they were doing, they knew they were making the writing equivalent of a back alley abortion, and this one actually gets my vote for the most useless episode of the entire series. Not necessarily the worst, just the one with the least reason to exist. Nothing new gets introduced, no subplot moves forward, and the trouble of the day is as frivolous as it comes, even while considering the competition. If this episode was skipped entirely, no one would notice. Following up from episode 4, the focus of the day is Sage getting the hang of using her newly acquired Terra Sphere. And you might think that something like that is a decent premise for an episode, an important step in the development of a future sorceress guardian of the realm to be. It's a literal school, this is a series about young girls training to be the best like no one ever was at what they do, so what better use of time could there be than a good old fashioned training montage with all the ups and downs, arduous work and sweat and sleepless nights and push it to the limit eye of the tiger action. This is as simple as a premise gets, all you have to do is show the arc of growing, passage of time linearly from one day to the other, one week to the next, the steady incremental improvement, seeing a character work for their success is a surefire way to make them likable and gain goodwill from the audience and let's just see how the show manages to fuck everything up. Sage sneaks out during the crack of dawn to get in some extra training before classes. Admirable initiative. She is woefully behind in her studies, so she definitely ought to place as much time as she can into mastering her newfound power. The intensity of the Terra Sphere is rather overwhelming. We actually see Sage struggling. She pulls an Iron Man 1, nearly face planting across the schoolyard. Surprised she didn't snap her spine from the whiplash, but hey, cartoon physics I guess. Makes one wonder about the lax security of the academy who's responsible if the students end up self-deleting while on campus. But that's an abandoned concern at this point, whimsy away. Sage's secret training gets abrupted by Fime, saving her from her own incompetence. And curiously, this is the only way we see Fime practicing magic, ever, with old magic runes. The much talked about enchanted marksmanship for example never comes into play, wouldn't it be more fitting if Fime's magic was tied to her archery somehow? Like the bow acting as a catalyst for the spells? Some continuity? Maybe insert some lore about the Dark Elves? The Fairy Woods? But of course, these episodes were written by different people, and it's unreasonable to ask for the writers to exchange notes. Thank you! Just trying out my new Terra Sphere, but I can't control it yet. You know how it is. Not really. I don't mess with that shit. You kiss your mother with that mouth? Forget I asked. And the hell are you doing out here anyway? Just stalking the Rotary randomly. Is it for some kind of demented nostalgia? Instead of watching paint dry, grass grow, you watch the rot silently spread? And not inform anyone about it? Do you get some kind of sick pleasure from the closeness of impending apocalypse? In any case, to the show's lukewarm credit, the part about Sage training is fine. She has decided to embrace a new type of spellcasting and she is putting in the effort to master it. Not only that, but it is shown that she actually isn't quite grasping it immediately. I want to underline that this in isolation is good. It follows cause and effect, showcases logical motivation, it makes sense. The initial setup works in concept. The author is so close to creating something actually decent here. It's just that the way the rest of the episode unfolds squanders all of it. The magic class of the day takes place at the botanical garden. The crazy cacleta teacher feeds one of the students to a man-eating plant. Are you even surprised at this point? Now watch how fast that fucker eats through flesh. Fuck me. Now watch how long that poor lass spends inside that insatiable maw. She 
she is dead. Oh, never mind, she is fine. Apparently the piranha plant just wanted to suckle the skin cream off her cheeks. Better have those nasty marks checked up though. Is there a doctor in the school? A nurse? Anything of the sort? There's only so many times, and so many ways I can say this. This place is evil, and the teachers are insane. And I'm using the term teacher with extreme generosity. For example, this is all the guidance given in this class for rookie mages. Today we'll be giving these plants a real pruning. We will use the collected buds in future spells. The teacher does whatever, never explains anything, and then expects the students to replicate the spell. This is not teaching. Something like this has no value. These kids would learn as much, if not more, completely on their own. Why does this academy exist if they are so opposed to actually teaching their students? Whoever created this crap has never been to an actual hands-on class in any subject. There is no other reality where something this incompetently bizarre ends up on screen. And what do you mean we'll use them in future spells? New magic doesn't require anything except a Terra Sphere, right? And the utility of new magic is unlimited. So where are all these ingredients suddenly going to? I know you have potions classes at the academy, but that's exactly my point. Given the potency of new magic, as well as old magic runes, teleporting everyone, potion brewing should be obsolete. The job of this hag shouldn't exist in the first place. Unsurprisingly, despite the apparent simplicity of the task for the day, some of the students have difficulties completing it, specifically the trio of Sage, Fime, and Amaryllis, completely owing to the fact that Sage decides to make everything needlessly hard for everyone out of the blue. Let's watch. Is it okay if I use old magic? Sage, why crawl through the desert delirious with thirst when you can summon an oasis of sparkling water in any flavor you choose? Well, I was taught that old magic is sacred. <laughs> Maybe, but it's impractical. New magic doesn't require the hours of ritual, the reckoning, the effort. Basically, old magic is dumb. But I wouldn't say that. It's just new magic is better. New magic multiplies your power and lets you do what you want. My mother taught me that as magic gives to you, you must give to it or the balance will be destroyed. After a sizable spell, she plants a tree, and thanks. Balance, uh, 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 Schmalance. You've got a Terrasphere now, haven't you? I... I mean, yes, but... Do what you want, Sage. But the history of Guardians demonstrates that those who don't adapt are doomed to obsolescence. Sage, let me lay this out as simply as possible. This is a new magic class in an academy where the main field of study is new magic, you have a terra sphere, a tool meant for new magic, a tool that you quote, really like. So get the fuck down from your high horse and do what your teacher tells you to do. Stop wasting everyone's time, you self-absorbed, limelight hogging, special snowflake twat. And as a side note, about all this magical balance stuff, if this show ever decided to write a conclusion for itself, or just properly explain anything at all, the obvious story path to take with the rot would be that it's actually caused by the introduction of new magic, which supposedly siphons away the magic from the earth and triggers imbalances in nature, it would be the most obvious revelation given what little world building the show offers. However, this is never outright stated in the show itself, so it's a Schrodinger's plotline at best. Hilariously enough, if that actually ended up being the case, then several of the show's alleged themes and conflicts would end up even more broken than they already are. 
The whole debacle about conservative old magic practices, for example, would kneecap the progressive subtext of this show in its entirety. Back to what's literally on screen. How does any of this take longer than a second? Sage conjured up a sleeping spell in episode 3 with a flick of the wrist. You are telling me she can't sedate the hungry hungry Flora just as easily with old magic? Trade? Notes. You miserable hacks. And following on that, the fact that Fime doesn't mess with that shit, the shit being new magic, is conveniently ignored. She should agree with Sage here. In fact, it should be Fime specifically who demands to use old magic. If the show bothered to follow up on facts that were stated literally in the previous scene. But nope. Fime acts all frustrated because their group is dragging behind everyone else and is relieved once the deed is finally done, in a second, by Amaryllis, once new magic is brought into the mix. Fime is annoyed by Sage, because Sage wanted to use old magic, even though she herself uses old magic exclusively as well. And Sage is being a little bitch, and refuses to use new magic, despite that she was okay doing it that very same morning. None of this makes sense. Again, for the umpteenth time, two scenes, back to back, written solely by a single author, fundamental characterization, completely contradictory. That level of fuckery takes special skill. <laughs> New magic. The only decent way to do anything. Finally. Done. I didn't want to just use the easy way. Blah, 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 blah. Old magic is sacred. What's the sacred part, Slab? Sweating into plants instead of going to lunch? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, yes. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna kill myself! Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault! What am I supposed to say to that? Sage is pathetic. This is the definition of pathetic. All the characters in this show have the mental maturity of five-year-olds. These teenagers, who are in training to become warrior, hero, guardians or whatever the fuck, people who are supposed to endure hardship for the sake of others, people who will inevitably get hurt, physically and mentally, people who carry deadly arms and wield devastating magic, these people are so brittle they can't even handle the most mundane disagreement imaginable. A combat school should never tolerate this level of weakness. The first thing the academy should do is beat that kind of victim mentality out of the cadets. Literally. I'm beginning to see the point of the poisonings, and the surprise deep throats. If anything, the teachers clearly aren't being cruel enough. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.